Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a survival horror game in Unity and welcome to episode 5. So this episode we're going to carry on looking at a little bit of animation. So we're going to add in a door to maybe get out of this particular area here. So it'd be kind of the same as the uh, light we've been doing but well, we, you'll, you'll see as we go along. And we're also going to deal a little bit with some UI. Now UI is user interface. So commonly um, in most games, it's as a play, it's referred to as the uh, HUD, but when developing, it's referred to as UI or GUI. So what I'd like to do firstly is just add the light source back on just a little so we can see what we're doing here. And I'm going to add in a door right here. So let's go to our objects folder. And I'm going to bring in this door right here, which you can get on the website for free. Head over there, download an asset section, survival horror series, and you'll be able to download it. So in here, we have a couple of objects. So we have this one here, which is the door. So let's drag and drop. You can see it's quite small. So we just need to rotate it and increase the size. So we can rotate it to 90 degrees. And let's change the scale to 10 by 10 by 10. And we can see... The door is taking shape, but it needs to be much bigger. So let's try 25 by 25 by 25. Press play, and let's just see if the scale of the door is appropriate, which it is. And we can currently walk all the way through it, but we're going to resolve that anyway. So now let's texture this door. Let's make it look a little bit better than what it is. So in the materials folder here, we can see that we have two materials which are currently blank. Now we've dealt with materials before about how we apply them to different things, but these materials are already pre-made. So what we do is let's take the first one, which is called door frame. Let's head back to door, and we just need to drag and drop the door frame texture into the albedo. Same applies for the other material. Drag and drop the door onto the albedo. You can see we now have a door. Textures at least looks a little bit better. So it's up to you guys if you want to add some uh, metallicness to it, a bit of a feel to make it more grittier. Same with the smoothness. It's up to you what kind of levels you want to play around with. Uh, I'm not going to tell you obviously how to make your own game. It's something you work on yourself. So I'm going to leave that there. And the idea of what we're going to do here is create an artificial hinge for the door to open. And it's going to be the hinge which actually animates. So to do this on the door, right click, 3D object, cube. And let's increase the cube size to about 10 by 10 by 10. And we can see that overall it's huge, absolutely huge, even though it's only 10 by 10 by 10. The reason I've done this is because I want to make a point here that when you increase something that's rather small within Unity, like the store originally was, if you attach something inside it like a cube, it turns, it's kind of relative to what the size is. So if we uncouple this cube now, you'll see the scale change. So it's changed to 250 by 250 by 250. So this is the scale of the Unity world around us. But when it's attached to the door, it's the scale of the door, but it still remains the same size. So always be wary about what you're doing here. So I'm going to control Z to undo all that. Set the cube back to uh, fairly, well, I say fairly small, but it's not very small at all, is it? So I'm going to change it to 0 0.05 by 0 0.05 by 0 0.05. And double click to zoom in. We can stay, uh, see it's still little bit too big so what we'll do is I'm going to pull it up and into place about there and I'm going to decrease it sliding this so we can see we need to definitely decrease this let's try 0 0.01 by 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 <clears throat> so let's make this like an artificial hinge so let's drag it into place at the edge of the door about there so that looks fine and just for effect I'm actually going to increase this to about 0 0.03 so you can see this is the one that's going to swing and what we need to establish now is which object within this door is the actual door and which is the frame so if we click the door in the scene and again we should be able to see that pcube 2 is the actual door we need to make sure that we drag pcube 2 onto cube 
and click continue. <clears throat> All this means is we're breaking the prefab. The prefab is the collection of objects. We need to break it because we've added an object to it. Now, if you want to see your door, your door I should say, uh, working without animation, just to check that everything is looking okay, what you can do is if you click on cube, let's right click and rename first and have it door hinge. Let's take the mesh renderer off here so it disappears so we don't see it when we press play. But if we rotate on the Y, we can see that the door swings open. So this is the kind of motion that we'll be going for. So next thing to do is to create an animation for the door. Or rather, should we get the door in the correct position first? Let's take our door and let's drag it to about there and see if it's it does look pretty much in line with this wall here, which will do just fine. Now, I know there's no doorknob on there. There's nothing fantastic on there. But um, we'll probably get a little bit more detail with that as we go on. But I'm just going to work on the door itself here. So let's go to our animations folder. Make sure we do click on door hinge, not the door. Got to be door hinge. Animation. Create. And let's have um, first door open anim and click on save so we've worked with animation before so i'm not going to you know, take too much time here but we're going to open this door over the period of let's say two seconds so frame zero the keyframe we need to make sure that our rotation at least on the y is set to zero so i'm going to press one just to set that as red and then reset it to zero to make sure our first keyframe is set and hit enter. So we're going to do this over two seconds, as I say. So we need to type in frame 120. Hit enter. And by the time we're on frame 120, which is two seconds, we want our door to be fully open. So let's rotate on the Y to our fully open position, which will be, I'd say, about there, I think. Just short of 90 degrees. About 80. We'll do minus 89, I think. And hit enter, record button to stop, and project. Now let's save our scene, and let's press play. And we should be able to see our door opening. So it'll open constantly because we have the animator component on there. So let's sort that out now. Door hinge. Uh, remove component on there and add component animation and let's drag and drop the first door open animation clip we need to set it as a legacy which we've done previously set it back to normal and wrap mode is going to be once so let's press play and our door opens just once perfect that's all we want to see for now so the idea of what's going to happen is we want our door to open when we have some UI. So let's take a look at some UI. Game object, UI, and let's start with just text. So what we want to happen is when we approach our door, we want UI to appear on the screen to say, for example, the E key says open door. So if we double click on our text, it'll probably take you way off screen like it has done for me because all of this white line here is the canvas and the canvas is what's represented as your screen it is overlaid on whatever's happening in the scene with whatever is inside the canvas so if i change this and let's just put in square brackets the letter e and i'm going to align it center and then i'm going to position the whole thing in the center and increase the size of the font so Let's increase it to 30. Hit enter and let's change the color down here to white. So you can just basically click on there and drag it or you can use the pipette tool and change it to whatever color you would like. So I'm going to use this little tool here and you'll notice all four corners are now selected in blue and you can just drag to increase the size, shrink, large, whichever one you feel is best. So I'm now going to click in the center of this and move it upwards. And you can see the line of blue there represents that that is kind of locked in the center. You can shift it away, 
But if you want it center, make sure it's on that blue line. So just to show you what I mean with UIs overlaid on top, when we press play, we can see that this E key is overlaid on top of our screen at all times. And obviously, as we get further into development, um, we're going to have a script to disable that and only enable it when we need it. So let's right click and rename this and we'll have action key. Hold control, press D, and I'm going to right click and rename this one just to say action text and just drag it down to about there. And I'm going to change this to say open the door. And we just need to expand this and put it about there. I think I may change the size of the font on this to about 24 just to decrease it a little. And let's press play again and we should be able to see. Yep, that is how we want. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn these elements off. So select the first one, hold control, select the second one, and then tick at the top to turn them off because we don't strictly need them on right now. There's no point because in the next episode, we're going to code uh, a way of actually activating it. The final thing I want to do is head back to this door because at the moment we can walk through that door. So we really need to set some colliders. So if we click on our door hinge and then click on our door itself, let's head back to our cross tool. Let's go to add component, delete if anything, if you've got it in the search bar, click on physics, and then let's click on box collider. And hopefully we should be able to see, I'm not sure if we can see it too well on this, but we have a green outline as well as the orange outline. This green outline now represents the fact that we cannot walk through this door. So even though it's opening, which we'll turn off in just a second, we won't be able to walk through it. So click on door hinge, uh, sorry, door itself, which is where the animation component is stored and untick play automatically. So if we press play now, we shouldn't be able to walk through our door. So obviously it's got to be open. However, I think we need to do the same for the, yeah, we need to do the same for the door frame as well. So let's go on door frame and add component physics, but this time we're not going to use a box collider because if we have a box collider on, it will put a collider around the entire object itself, not around the edges. So even if this door was to open, so I'll play automatically again, if the door was to open, we wouldn't actually be able to go through because the collider is stopping us from going through on the frame. So having a box collider on the frame is not a good idea in this case. So we need to right click, remove. The collider we do need, if we go to add component, physics is mesh collider. And then we need to tick on convex. Now what this does is it puts a collider around the entire uh, object outline. In this case, I'm not quite sure if it has worked because of how the door works, but we'll have a quick look. Generally, I'm not a fan of um, having colliders in the mesh sense because they can be a little bit buggy in how they work. Uh, this door itself is a prime example of a collider not working properly. So I think ultimately what we'll do is remove component and we'll end up setting the colliders ourselves manually later on. We could always do it via a cube, but essentially as long as we have this um, collider on just the door, we won't be able to pass through it. I think that's the important thing at this point. So we've gone a fair way now. We, we've got some animation. We've got something being built for ourselves now. So we're going to leave this tutorial here for now. And I think next episode, let's add in some audio. So we're going to look at some effects. Maybe for this door, we'll have a creaky door sound. And we're definitely going to start coding to open this door. And we're going to do it using something called Raycast. So from the next episode onwards, the scripting is going to get fun. I, I like coding. I like scripting. It's one of my favorite things to do. And the scripts are going to get longer and longer and longer as we go along. But don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Don't be too worried about the scripts themselves because they may seem complicated. But when you stop and think logically, the scripting is pretty good. So until that next episode, guys, 
you work on your door, you work on your level, and get yourselves ready for some more scripting. Until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching.